I have the power of God and anime on my side. Hi guys, welcome back. I hope, I, I hope to God you coming back. And if you're new, then I hope you continue to come back. Today I'm going to talk about um, more about my German learning. I previously posted a video about a year ago where I was talking about using Duolingo and I had been doing it at the time for like six months. And now it's been like a year and a half and I'm still doing it. And I'm still here and we're still in quarantine. Basically right now I have a 441 as this video is being shot and filmed and filmed on location right here in my living room. I have a 441 day streak on Duolingo. Right now, almost all of my levels are at the orange stage, which is like the fourth level you reach. And, and then after that, I'm going to try and get everything gold. I've finished Duolingo a few times around now. Like I've done all of the lessons a few times around now. And yeah, the goal is to get it all in gold and to be the tiniest little expert I can be. Where am I with my German? Have I improved? Last, in the first video I posted, I talked about how I'm at the level where I can ask for directions. I can go to a German speaking country and maybe get by. I can say Entschuldigung if I bung, bump into somebody by accident. Es tut mir leid. Now I think I'm at the next level over that where I can have simple conversations, talk to people about what my favorite things are. I could explain who I am as a person and what I do for a living and even state some of my opinions. Yeah, I couldn't write like a full PhD dissertation. I'm also not trying to do that. I have two cats to take care of, okay? I don't have time to get my PhD. Why don't I just show you? Hello, Leute. Ich heiße Sam. My Lieblings essen ist Nudeln mit Käse oder um, Macaroni mit Käse. Ich weiß nicht, um, wann in Deutschland sie haben Nudeln mit Käse, Macaroni mit Käse, aber Ich liebe das. Ich habe eine schöne Familie. Ich habe zwei Eltern, eine Mutter, ein Vater und eine Schwester. Meine Schwester hat ein Baby, ein kleines Mädchen. Sie ist nicht ein Jahr alt. Sie ist fast ein Jahr alt. Ich denke, sie ist zehn Monate. Und meine Schwester hat einen Mann. Und er ist sehr nett. Er ist in die Familie jetzt. Und ähm, was sonst? Ähm, wir alles, wir haben Katzen zusammen. Also meine Schwester hat zwei Katzen und meine Eltern hat, haben ein Katzen. Ein Katze. Sie ist schwarz. Sie ist sehr süß und I forget the word for fat. Sie ist fat. <lacht> und hier wir haben zwei Katzen. Wir auch haben zwei Katzen. Soibin und Lilly. My babies. Um, yeah, so that's a bit of me talking in German, so you can see kind of where I'm at and what level. My grammatik is nicht so good, so yeah, my my grammar can always be better. But it so could it be in English. So could it be in English. <laughs> what else can I do? I can read song lyrics and mostly understand them. If it's a pop song, which is usually more simple and repetitive, I might go and look up a couple words, but ultimately I'd still be able to understand what the song is about and most verses in the song, most lines in the song, most words most Werte. Um, in fact, when I was younger, I became obsessed with this German cartoon called Schnappi. Recently, I went back and listened to the theme song and it goes like, Ich bin Schnappi, das kleine Krokodil. Going back to it, I realized that I actually now understand the entire song without having to look anything up. And to me, that is like, I made it. I made it, I know the language, I'm fluent. <laughs> so how did I get here? You might be wondering. How I got into this situation. Yeah, as you can see, I can actually talk. I can have a conversation. And the reason why is consistency, ultimately. And I hate to break it to you. It's not a magic skill. It's literally just sitting there and doing it every day. Yeah, I've been doing this. I'm going to round up and say 500 days. I know my um, streak is 441 days, but I was also learning German before I decided to do a streak and go and go streaking. I decided to do Duolingo before I decided to go streaking. So yeah, I'm gonna round it up and say 500 days of Deutsch. <laughs> so how did I stay consistent? Good question. In my uh, 
first video where I talked about learning German, I explained my process, what I do for a lesson. We are our own best teachers. And I think at this point I spend, or at least at that time, I spent about 10 minutes to an hour, maybe even over an hour if I was like, if I had nothing else to do like that. Working on Duolingo, just doing lessons, writing down words, using my little Google Doc of vocabulary, charts of dative nouns. This video is sponsored by the Fire Ferrets. See them in the Olympics 2020 Japan. Fire Ferrets, they're on fire. And I think something that helped make it consistent was the fact that Duolingo is basically like a game. Like you're learning languages, but you're also collecting experience points. Yeah, what really helped was finding friends of mine who are also on Duolingo and take it as seriously as I do and literally just compete with them. I had one friend, I had, I, he's still alive. I have a friend who's learning Mandarin, great for him. And he had so many experience points I was intimidated and I had like, let's say I had 20,000 and he had 50,000. It was my goal to get more experience points than him. It seems impossible. It seems that was so far, it was as far as life on Mars at this point, but I did it. I beat you, Andrew. I looked at how many experience points he got that day and I tried to do at least just get 10 more experience points than him. And eventually, yes, I surpassed him. And I'm still, and to this day, I am still surpassing him on the app. If you are like, I don't have any friends, just like add me on Duolingo. Here's my, here's my username. I'm not gonna point somewhere specific. And then you can, we can follow, you can follow me and then you can compete to get more experience points than I. Captain Hook. If you do have a partner you're living with or a roommate or a best friend or a mother and father or a sibling, um, encourage them to get into it as well. You can, you know, it's very good to motivate each other. We're always like, oh, one sec, I gotta do my Duolingo. And then the other one's like, oh, I'll do mine too. And then you're both sitting there like, the baby's in the oven. Whoosh. Now, honestly though, I do have a 441 day streak on Duolingo and I think I'm just losing steam when it comes to Duolingo. It's gotten me this far and I can't thank it enough. Congratulations, class of 2021. So I was thinking about the next step. What do I do now that I'm losing steam? What do I do when I do get all of gold on Duolingo and I can't do it anymore? There's one thing I can do. I can learn a new language, which is what I'm doing. Yo. Aprendo Espanol. But I still want to continue with my German. So to me, the next step in my head automatically was, oh, I'm going to get a tutor. I'm going to pay for a tutor or I'm going to learn f with formal German lessons at an institute. But that's crazy. When we're a baby, we don't pay money to learn our native tongue. I didn't pay money to learn English. I didn't pay money to learn French. And that, but if you do really want that to be your next step, great, go do that. And, and the video ends now for you. Now that the 1% is gone, how do I stay engaged? That's my question. How do I stay engaged in this language that I do love without really being in that country and being surrounded by this language every day? So for now, here's how I'm taking my language learning to the next level. So for example, with French, I, even though I live in a French speaking country, I don't live in a French speaking city. So ways that I keep it up is by talking to people I know that speak French. Luckily, my partnerin spricht Französisch. She speaks French. She's French, she's from France, right? She has headphones on. She's doing Duolingo right now. And also my mom. My mom is from Quebec. Bonjour, Nicole. But as for German, I do kind of know a couple people who speak German, but the thing is we're not super close. I'm not dating them. I'm not related to them. And sometimes we try to chat via Instagram or Facebook and all that, but at the end of the day, I'm not seeing them every day and I'm, we're not engaging in physical conversations every day. So with a quick Google search, I found a website called meetup.com. I found a group of language lovers that like to meet up at the park, say, and exchange their language knowledge and skills and just chat with each other and help each other learn. And I think that's really cute and fun and adorable. And that would be so much fun to do right here in my own city. Once, you know, the pandemic ceases a little bit. Get your, get vaccinated dot, get vaccinated dot com. I don't know if that's a website. Just get back, just get, honestly, just get vaccinated. I'm so tired. And with a little search like that, maybe you could find a 
language loving, learning loving, loiters, that means people, in your own town. Now meetups are all fun and games until somebody gets hurt. <laughs> meetups are all fun and games until the introvert gets tired. If you're an introvert like me, meetups might sound scary. Well, that's why I love me some TV, baby. I, that was, I hated that. In my first video, um, I mentioned TV shows, German TV shows I love, like Dark and How to Sell Drugs Online. And I practice my French by watching French TV shows with French subtitles. If you're learning French, some of my faves include Call My Agent, Lupin, and Astrid et Raphael. The thing about um, those shows on Netflix, and I think French in particular, is that the subtitles are not always the same as what they're saying on screen. And the reason why is because sometimes in French, a sentence can be a lot longer to spell out. And French people talk very fast, so they'll shorten the sentence for the subtitles, but as you're reading it, you're like, I know that's not what they're saying, and it might be confusing. So that's my one little thing with watching TV shows. But they got everything, Netflix got everything. You got Netflix, you got everything. There's even a freaking Flemish show called The Twelve that you can watch. And I think there's fun little levels you can do. You can first watch it in, that la in the language with English subtitles. Now that you might be like, but I'm just gonna focus and read the English subtitles and not learn anything. But if you're brand brand new, that's a good way you at least hear it and get it in your mind. Maybe hear accents and how words are supposed to sound. You'll pick up words here and there. And then the next step is to watch it in the language with that language's subtitles. And then hopefully we get to a beautiful place where we don't need we don't freaking need subtitles at all. And finally, another thing you can do is watch a show you're super familiar with, like an American-made television show. For example, me, it would be 30 Rock. I basically have that entire series memorized inside and out, backwards and forwards. What I can do then is go to Amazon Prime, go to Crave. I can throw it on, but put the set the language into German. So the whole thing's dubbed in German. I know what they're saying. I know the context of the show, but I'm hearing it all in the in the language I'm learning. So viele verschiedene Arten Spatzen. So viele verschiedene Arten Spatzen. The other thing I like to do is just listen to music. Music is a great way because of the catchy melodies and rhythms. It's a great way to drill sentences and words into your freaking little heads. My first experience with Spanish was memorizing the Spanish rap from Community. La discoteca, muñeca, la biblioteca, eso bigote grande pero manteca. Buenos días, me guste papa frías, bigote de la capra es camarón días. And another good thing is doing something like listening to the soundtrack of In the Heights where they'll throw in random Spanish words like paciencia y fe. And then you know what that means because you hear it over and over again in the song. With things like Spotify, it's so easy to just look up like top German pop songs of 2021. And you'll find like 13 different playlists that are super good and extensive. Honestly, if I'm being honest, I'm mostly listening to Spanish music. And some of my favorite artists are Natalie Perez and the band Miranda. So catchy! In conclusion, I think people who have a passion for learning languages are so fun and cute and are really good and cute and wonderful people because they're the kind of people who are gonna go out and they wanna learn about other cultures and other point of views and they are gonna start looking at the world in different ways. Can you perfectly translate the word browsing in other languages? What about swaggy? Can you? <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, so keep learning. There's always ways to learn where you don't have to pay money. And I hope this helped. And I will immer this video machen, weil ich liebe die Sprache Deutsch. I hope that made sense. <laughs> okay, danke. And um, meine Katzen sind sehr süß. Okay, tschüss. Oh my God, I almost forgot. If you like this video and this helps motivate you even a little bit, please like the video, like physically put, click the thumbs up button and give it a like. Let's try to get it to 20 likes. And I'm gonna make more of this stuff and I do this sometimes. So if you liked that, if, if you liked this, oh my God. And I make more and I make stuff like this a lot. So you can subscribe. You can, you can, you can punch that subscribe button and turn on that bell notification. Cause why not? It's free and you're making my day. You can leave a nice comment. Um, we can have, we can be like, we can have, have fun and be friends and share this video if you feel like it. Okay. Thank you everybody. Tschüss.